welcome. This is going to be our lecture video for December 4th. We're doing another step-by-step uh, -step binder lesson today. You can download this off the extra stuff calendar or just write this on a separate piece of paper and then clip it into your step-by-step -step binder. Okay, so absolute values, what are they? Uh, absolute value. Let's just write down a quick definition. Is an operation that always outputs a positive. So these are really useful uh, when we want to just calculate uh, maybe the difference from a number, but we don't care if we miss high or we miss low. We just want to know how far we missed by. Absolute values are really useful in that scenario um, where, yeah, a miss is a miss whether or not you miss high or low. So we want to treat them all like they're positive numbers. And this is what they look like. They're just straight line brackets that go around uh, a number or a variable or an expression. Uh, and what they're going to do is they're going to take that number and they're just going to make it positive. So the absolute value of negative 8, here we'll write this with an equal sign, equals 8. <coughs> it doesn't change the number in any other way other than if it's negative, it makes it positive. But what if we take the absolute value of a positive, like the absolute value of 4? So we've got these long, very tall brackets around a 4. Uh, it just stays a 4. It was already positive, so it doesn't need to change it in any way. Let me draw these better. You want to make them look extra tall so they don't look like 1s. Uh, Alright, so now how do we solve when there's a variable inside there? So that's what we need to write our steps for. So step 1, we need to use inverse operations to isolate the absolute value brackets. All right, so if there's any operation outside of the absolute value brackets, like in number three here where we got this plus six, we need to get rid of that uh, by doing a subtract six from both sides to get the absolute value by itself. All right, step two. We need to split the absolute value into two cases. All right, and we call these cases the positive case and the negative case. For the positive case, you're going to just drop the brackets. The value inside is already positive, so the brackets don't have a job to do, so they just get dropped. All right, then we have the negative case. And in this case, we want to replace the brackets with a negative parentheses. Replace the brackets with the negative parentheses. All right, and then step three. So we want to solve each case separately. All right, and then obviously box your answers and plug them back in to double check. 
All right, let's practice with these three steps as we solve these. So in problem number one, we can skip step one because there's no operations outside the absolute value brackets. The absolute value brackets are already isolated. So we go straight to step two where we split the brackets. I show two arrows coming apart to show that this is splitting. All right, and now we, do, we have to do the positive case then the negative case. I always do the positive case on the left. In the positive case, those brackets just get dropped. R equals four. And we're actually done, this is already solved. We can skip step three on that one too. All right, and then over here, the brackets are gonna become a negative parentheses. So a negative in front of a set of parentheses and nothing else changes. So it's just like those brackets got curved inwards to become parentheses, and then a negative got put in front. All right, this one does require a little bit of solving. We do have to divide both sides by negative one to get r by itself, and we get the answer r equals negative four. All right, and hopefully this makes sense. If I plugged in a four here, the absolute value of four equals four, but also the absolute value of negative four equals four. So we have two answers. All right, and that's very typical of absolute value equations is that you get two answers. Sometimes you can get just one answer if the two answers match. And then it is possible to get no solution. Um, and that's when you've got an absolute value equal to a negative because absolute values can never be negative. They always output positives. All right, problem number two. No operations outside of the absolute value bracket, so we skip step one. In step two, we're going to split the absolute values into the positive and the negative case. In the positive case, we drop those brackets. In the negative case, we replace them with the negative parentheses. All right, both of these require some more solving, so I'm going to divide both sides by six over here and get that r equals one. And I can divide both sides by negative six over here to get rid of the negative and the six in, the, in one step and I get r equals negative one. All right, problem number three. Now we do need to do step one. There is an operation outside the absolute value brackets, so we want to get rid of it. We want to subtract six from both sides. We want this to be isolated, so the absolute value of x equals two. Now we can split it into the positive and the negative case. In the positive case, it's already solved. We get just x equals two. The negative case, we're just one step away from solving it. Negative x equals two. Divide both sides by negative one. x equals negative two. So you might notice a pattern here. For the first one, we got r equals four and negative four. For the second one, we got r equals one and negative one. For the third one, we got x equals two and negative two, but Number four is going to break that pattern a little bit. It's not always just the positive and the negative versions of a number. Sometimes they can be two totally separate numbers. All right, so with number four, I subtract four from both sides because that's outside the absolute value brackets. I want to get rid of that so that these brackets are isolated on one side of the equal sign. So we get the absolute value of negative four plus n equals six. And we'll split this. In one case, we just drop the brackets like they were never there. Nothing else changes. In the other case, it becomes a negative parentheses, negative four plus n equals six. And we solve each side separately. On this side, we'll add four to both sides. And we get n equals 10. Over here, we might end up distributing this negative and we get four minus n equals six, minus four minus four, negative n equals two, divide by negative one, divide by negative one, n equals negative two. All right, obviously plugging back in to double check. Um, let's see, let's just do that out loud. Negative four plus 10 is six, the absolute value of six is six. Six plus four is 10, 10 equals 10. Let's try with a negative two. Negative four plus negative two is a negative six. The absolute value of negative six is a positive six. Six plus four equals 10, 10 equals 10. They both check out. All right, 
Now we've got some with a bunch of operations outside. Um, let's practice problem number five here. Copy it down. Or maybe you printed this. So I've got two operations to get rid of. You have to do it in the correct order, moving constants first, then getting rid of this uh, multiplier. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I get negative 8 times the absolute value of 9p plus 5 equals negative 32. Divide both sides by negative 8. I get the absolute value of 9p plus 5 equals positive 4. Now I can split it into the two cases. 9p plus 5 equals 4 is the positive case, and negative parentheses 9p plus 5 equals 4 is the negative case. All right, and now just use your solving skills. I get p equals negative 1 ninth. And distribute the negative here. We get negative 9p minus 5 equals 4. Add 5. Divide by negative 9. p equals negative 1. And plug it back in to double check. Problem number six. Drop my tablet. Um, here we go. So subtract nine from both sides. Four times the absolute value of three M minus 10 equals 16. Divide by 4, divide by 4. Absolute value of 3m minus 10 equals 4. Now the absolute value is isolated, so split it into the two cases. 3m minus 10 equals 4, and negative parentheses 3m minus 10 equals 4. And solve each case separately. Add 10, add 10. 3m equals 14, divide by 3, divide by 3. That can't be simplified, so we leave it as the fraction m equals 14 over 3. And negative 3m plus 10 equals 4. Minus 10 minus 10, negative 3m equals negative 6. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. m equals 2. positive 2. All right, watch out for problems like these. So as I'm going along solving problem number 7 here, I divide both sides by negative 5, but I have the absolute value of x equals negative 6. But absolute values can't be negative. So definitely write this. Absolute values can't be negative. This has no solution. All right, let's try it on this one. We divide both sides by negative 7. The absolute value of p minus 6 equals negative 12, I want to say. And again, we get no solution because this was a negative. We have absolute value equals a negative. That's a no solution. All right, that's that for this uh, lecture video. Um, but a few more questions here for you to practice with. And have a great